morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome on into North Dakota today. It's time to get nice. All right, Amanda, <laughs> what do you have for us today? <laughs> okay. Joining well, us this morning is Amanda <laughs> with our North Dakota Nice blog. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, friends. How are you? Wonderful. Um, I have two stories today that could not be more different. Yeah. And the first one is both very exciting uh, and very heart pumping, so warning everyone. Literally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Margo and Pat Svoboda of Grand Forks were at Lake Bemidji at the cabin, and Pat, who's allergic to bees and wasps, was stung by a wasp. Uh, they Ugh. ended up not needing the EpiPen, but in the course of his treatment, they realized that his EpiPen was expired. So oh. they replaced it, uh -huh. put it in the drawer, went about their life. Yep. One week later, they're back at the lake, mm -hmm. and Margo's in the kitchen, and they hear <laughs> on the door. And it's a young woman and a 10-year-old girl. And the woman says, do you have an EpiPen? Oh we had an emergency. Gosh. And so Margo says, yes. She get, grabs the EpiPen, yep. gives it to the little girl, goes, run. The little girl takes off. Mm -hmm. Margo follows behind. And when they get there, there's a man on the ground, <laughs> unresponsive. His mother gives him the yeah. shot. And she's on the phone with 911. And emergency says, you need to start compressions. Yeah. And everybody's, as you can imagine, very shaken. Yeah. So Margo starts the compressions. So she's doing compressions. They can't find a pulse. They find a pulse. Pat shows up. He finishes the CPR. Emergency comes. They take over. And long, what was probably a very short amount of time in yeah. real life, but very long in, in feeling, yeah. he recovered and is fine. Oh, wow. my gosh. I know. And so the reason why they wanted to share this story yeah. I, I, um, was one. I asked Margo, I said, would you have done anything different? And she said, no, everything was exactly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the timing was perfect for yeah. everything. But she said two things. One, I would recommend that everybody get CPR training mm -hmm. if you can. And then two, um, if you have an allergy to carry an EpiPen, and I've been thinking about this and I've talked to a couple people about it because EpiPens are very, very expensive. Yeah. And so you, you would not, you don't need them. You mm -hmm. don't, are not just like, hi, $500 around right. to buy a pen yeah. just in case I'm at the lake and somebody needs it. Right. So, um, you know, there are, at Halloween, people put out teal pumpkins to say that they have allergy-free candy. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's some way that we can collectively as yeah. society say, how are we going to, exp I have an EpiPen. So how can I tell people, yeah. if you see me around, I'll give you my EpiPen. Yeah. <laughs> so I was telling somebody else this story and she's a teacher in Fargo here and she said, EpiPens are, are a medicine, obviously, and they're so expensive that if you have an attack at school and need an EpiPen and you don't have an EpiPen, they won't use someone else's EpiPen on you. Oh. So I, I don't know the logistics of this. It could be like a liability thing or something, but mm -hmm. it would be good if we could also, also figure out, as a North Dakota society, yeah. can we fund EpiPens to be kept in the school for these children? Wow. Yeah, wow. So, yes. So, so long, very long story short, the man is fine. The Sabotas are heroes. The family are happy. Yeah. Everything is great. The end. I was going to say, what an incredible <laughs> reminder to check expiration dates for things like that. Yes. Especially if you do have one and you don't necessarily have anyone right near you who would potentially need it. Yes. So say you are just that type of person who has it in an emergency situation, but you still need to do the upkeep for the expiration. Wow. Exactly. And so here's a, here's a fact. Don't let that, don't let this, what I'm telling you, if you're like, oh, I better get my EpiPen. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, EpiPens are still effective after they are expired, mm. but you should still replace your, yeah. your EpiPen. So if you get, if you're having an emergency and you're like, uh-oh, this is expired, garbage, still use it, right. mm -hmm. but it's much better, as you said, wow. Ashlyn, is if you need an EpiPen, go and check it. I should have brought, I was telling them before we started, I have a, a test EpiPen for my son, so yeah. I should have brought that to show you like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, we, oh, yeah. Uh, well, maybe not actually yeah. do it, yeah. please. <laughs> no, we're just glad that that turned out very, very happily. Mm -hmm. Me too, so thank you to everybody involved. We're sending good thoughts. I think everyone's yeah. fine now. It's been a couple of weeks. So yeah, good. good. Okay, so tell us about something called the Sugar Beet Mafia. Yes, this is a huge pivot. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, uh, this is more lighthearted. So uh, the, the Gaditas family of Minto, they have- I know them. Shut the door. <laughs> yes. You do? My college roommate is their neighbor. Oh my gosh. Well, that is so funny. With this story. <laughs> That's Let's amazing. call them right now. Let's call can them. Can we phone a friend? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can help me get all this right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, um, they are sugar beet farmers, mm -hmm. and they decided last year that they were going to make a video. Um, oh, here's some photos, some stills from the video 
of their harvest. So they made a documentary style video and they just did it to preserve the memories and maybe attract some workers uh, in the following year. And they, they covered the whole thing. It's a 45 minute video, mm -hmm. which I'll put on my website. Um, and uh, they feature things like, there's a guy named Rooster who sold them a tractor that's in there. Yeah. They had, uh, they have a cook named Heidi who feeds everybody. Mm -hmm. She's in there. So they put it out on the internet and lo and behold, it got millions of views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the time that they've now had it, they uh, have sent um, uh, Godita's family gear across the world. Yeah. They've had people visit from across the world oh, to wow. come see the farm. Uh, they have had thousands of people apply for jobs, even jobs that don't exist. Mm -hmm. And what <laughs> I think what they took away from it, besides the fact that, that I think what people really are struck by is, first of all, most people don't even know that sugar comes from beets. Mm -hmm. And so just the overall, what we think is just something we all know is not common knowledge outside of our region. And then also just sharing farm stories. A couple of weeks ago when I was here, you were teasing her that she should have made a video when you were helping your yeah, family yes. farm. Yeah, on that farm. Yes, and so I think the more that we can as North Dakotans share those, I mean, I don't have any to thing to share in that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're hoping you can at home, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you share it. I think that the more we can bring it, bring it, show people who we are here and show what goes on. Um, Jay Gaditas uh, said to me that um, he actually said a lot of beautiful things, and I'm going to put those on my website too. But he said that one of the things that they really are proud of is how hard they work, and they get that from mm -hmm. their parents, John and Susan. And I think that's just something that's very. Uh, inherent in our culture here mm -hmm. and so I just love that so much. Yeah. Okay, yes. and really quickly, how do we get a hold of you? How do we read the blog? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you're good. I've everything on NorthDakotaNice.com or NDNice.com and both of these were submitted. Actually the Godita story was submitted like four months ago and I held it because yeah. of sugar beet harvest. Uh -huh. um, so send it away to me and please keep sending them and please keep saving your neighbors. That would be good. Yes. Yeah. Let's get yeah. that going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, we'll see you next Monday. All right, stick around. It is the era of podcasts, especially for those true crime junkies. Coming up next, we have the host of the Midwest Murders podcast joining us in studio.